Well, thanks to you and uh, and everybody else who has joined us. This is um, th this webinar program is something relatively new for Pomarco. Uh, we are going to start doing this on a fairly regular basis, with the with the with the overall focus being to uh, basically put information out there so that people can become more educated about the analog's role, but not just the analog's role, but the entire print process as well, whether it's wide web, uh, flexible packaging, corrugated, narrow web, whatever it is. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of folks out there uh, who are using analog trolls every day. So our goal specifically today is to talk about analog troll audits and primarily and also about, um, about analog troll care. Um, the, the audit process, and, and uh, James, James Chesley, um, who is my uh, counterpart in the northern part of the, of the western region for Pomarco. James is going to talk about the audits and uh, how they are done. Uh, but the importance of that whole process, though, will become clear to you if you haven't had one done. And uh, actually, James and I both do these, uh, and it works out uh, works for us very well. So. Um, and it gives the customer essentially a roadmap of what he has uh, and helps him understand if there's issues with the with the roles that are in the machine. So James, uh, I'm going to move to this first slide. If you want to, if you want to start talking about the maintenance and the uh, the audit, that'll be uh, that'll be great. It's all yours. Sure, sure. Thanks, Frank. My name's Jim Chesley. I'll uh, I'll start off with the the role maintenance and, and the care. Uh, you know, role maintenance is, is pretty important, obviously, uh, uh, keeping your roles clean. Uh, but I uh, want to move on to the e-flow real quick. E-flow, the design of that, the shallower sail, longer sail, uh, it, it releases ink better. So, so it kind of helps on the plugging. It doesn't have a chance to sit in the bottom of that with, with the shallow sail. Uh, you know, plugging you know, can can affect a lot of things. It, it affects the volume, obviously, and, and the print density. You know, you know, you want your your colors to kind of stay the same, obviously. But uh, you know, Pomarco's done a lot of audits. It says uh, over seventy thousand. Uh, you know, twenty five percent show wear, ten percent damage, and, and the big number there, sixty five percent losing volume, which which uh, you know changes everything when it when it comes to to, to laying the ink down. So, go ahead, Frank. Uh, the audit process, uh, you know, I'll go through this real quick. Basically, uh, I would get in a hold of whoever's in charge of, of the analog roles or who I would meet with there at the plant. Come in. Uh, uh, the first thing I think is very important in, in the audit process is safety. Uh, nobody nobody wants an accident in their plant, and, and I know most plants are, are pretty safety conscious. It's pr pretty heavily driven these days, but... Uh, so locking out the presses, uh, you know, just being a safe skin, earplugs, glasses. Uh, what I try and do is get in, uh, get into the to the middle of a roll where most of the print would be. Try not to get to the outside edges, but uh, I get in there and I, I clean out the spot. Uh, usually, I let everybody know beforehand when I'm coming. So, so if if we can have the press down, fine. If not, we can shut it down for a few minutes to to get to each roll. But clean the spot in the middle. Put the microfax reading on and, 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 and do the impression. I pull it off. Basically, we attach it to a card and send it in. Uh, the most, uh, I, th I think, the more information we can get on these, the better. Uh, if, if, if you know your volumes and, and the line per inch on the roll, your check and helps uh, helps the reading. So she can give us a a percentage, you know, of what's left on your volume. With, without a volume reading, it'd be hard hard to give that. So. But we send that in, and, and we have a high-power microscope that reads depth to opening ratios, looking for plugging, thin walls, uh, and then of course we get that report back, and then I can share it with with the people that I I did the audit with. And and here's here's a copy of the audit. Uh, this would be for one roll. Uh, like I say, if you you can look in there and see if if there's not a a volume put in, it, it's pretty hard to give an, a percentage, but this one has one. But it shows plugging where, uh, if you 
should re-engrave or, or, or what your next step should be. You know, maybe it just needs a good cleaning. And here, here would be, this would be the last page of the report that you would get back and it goes through each roll, each press, each station, or if the roll was on a rack. But you can notice the very last one on there, it's, it's worn, it's kind of red, but it doesn't have the original cell volume. And that gets back to what I was saying earlier. It's it's pretty hard to, to give a percentage of what's left if we never had one to begin with. Uh, so so the more information we can get, the better. I, I, know, I know a lot of places have, on outside of each station, a, a magnetic placard with all the information, and they change that as the roles get changed, which is very nice. Uh, a lot of people don't, which kind of leaves a, a guessing game sometimes. But uh, we can still take a reading. Looking for for worn rolls, plugging. We we can still get a lot of information. You know, uh, James, uh, this is Frank. I just wanted to point out sure. one thing that's on this uh, on this uh, summary report, and that's the ECV, which is the effective cell volume, the percentage. And you know that really does tell you everything because you'll notice, for example, on the third roll down, which is a, a ward in this case. Um, Original cell volume was 9.50. Based on records, uh, the cell volume at this point is 4.96. So it's it's 52 percent. It's 48 percent ineffective essentially. Yeah. And so that, that this gives you all that information. Yeah, that could actually be a classified or, instead of orange red. I would I would go out on a limb and say that that would be yeah. probably a good candidate. So yeah. good call, good catch. Yeah. But I just think that's a that's an important part of this whole uh, of this whole process. Sure, You're, yeah, like I say, uh, a lot of information there, a lot of good information. Roll inspections, uh, you know, checking the roll coming in, pretty important. Uh, score lines, damage. Uh, I, I try to do a visual inspection when I'm doing an audit. Uh, some of these presses, though, it is very difficult when you're doing a, a roll in press to see, you know. Very, very little of it's uh, open to even taking the audit. I mean, you only got sometimes a four or five inch window across. But uh, I, I try and look as much as I can. Uh, but you should look when when you get a roll back. Uh, you know, any, anything that doesn't look right, uh, it's easier to catch it before you put it in the machine, for sure. And, and that's where, it's like, say, if, if the roll's out of the press on a rack, it's it's pretty easy to, to check. But uh, the ones in the presses are pretty tough sometimes to see everything. Plugging. You can see uh, you can see some of the picture. You can obviously see the plugging on, on some of these. Uh, even if you have, uh, I think, a microplane unit, say, or or, or a, a Sandlock system or, or whatever, I think it's important to uh, have some kind of a maintenance program in between some of that, uh, just to try and keep the you know the roll is is up to to the volumes as it's supposed to be. Uh, Poor cleaning practices will come back to haunt you. Uh, fans uh, uh, can be bad if it's too close to print stations, or, or uh, and that's where the e flow comes back in with, with the shallower cells. You, you really kind of get away from from the ink sitting in the bottom and hardening up, uh, and that's in there the engraved too deep part. But uh, but uh, it definitely, like like I said before, uh, plugging. You know, it'll definitely uh, it affect your print uh, densities. If you can the cleaner you can keep the roll, the more consistent. Uh, obviously, it will be. Roll life. Uh, I, I was kind of a little shocked when I seen the, the pie chart on this one. I, I just didn't think the damage rolls was, was that big. Uh, I, I thought it would be more of a uh, worn out, uh, you know, just run down after a couple of years. But uh, but you can see damage is, is, is a big thing on here. And so, you know, trying to, trying to keep... Uh, you know, wrenches from banging against it or bolts dropping in or, or just some good common practices. Uh, uh, we all know the, the time it takes to send a roll back and, and the expense it is, you know, to have one redone. So, uh, you know, if you can, anything you can do to, to try and keep that, uh, the big blue chart, the damage is uh, definitely uh, in your best interest. Handling, uh, and this this kind of just falls right into place with the last slide. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 
a cover. I mean, depending on the size of your roll, that's uh, an inexpensive cover can save you thousands of dollars. Uh, you know, with keeping anything from bumping up against it or falling on it. It's definitely, if it's, if it's on a rack somewhere, uh, nylon straps or, or whatever you're picking a roll up with, make sure it's balanced right. You don't want one end hitting the floor, or chipping the end or breaking the end. Uh, you know, pre- pretty much common sense. Uh, removing the covers and, and all that. It's just common sense. Got to be careful. I think it's important to, you know, when when you're out there in a the plant to, to express that to some of the, the, the people working around the press or the pressmen. The, the, you know, maybe, maybe they don't realize how much a role is to have recovered or the time sent in and out. But just just some good common practices, you know, for handling these roles. Uh, uh, common sense. But uh, that's that's kind of it it for that. I'll uh, I'll kind of turn it back over here to Frank. And he can move on with his portion. Okay, thanks, James. Uh, yep. Anybody have any questions on um, on the mm-hmm. audit, or uh, have a desire to uh, perhaps schedule one? Mm-hmm. And by the way, if you have questions, we'll we'll give you our number at the end of this thing, so that um, so that if you do have a question, you can you can call James or you can call me. Uh, or you can call our office and and speak to uh, probably speak to Tiffany, and uh, and we'll we'll go through any of this that you want us to. But but basically, um, we just want to again put information out there to make sure that uh, at least as far as a uh, as Pomarco goes as your vendor or as a vendor that we've done everything that we could to make sure that you've got the, the right tools to take care of the investments. That have been made in uh, analog trolls. Um, everything from, as you know, stainless steel brushes for the ceramic, for, for laser ceramic, um, cleaners. We carry, Pomarco carries a complete line of cleaners. We won't really go into what those are because that's not really the purpose of this to be, uh, to be commercial like that, but we want you to know that we carry a complete line of support equipment. Um, Cleaning systems, the Sanilox uh, uh, soda uh, system is a system that uh, Pomarco um, supports and sells for Eaglewood Industries, uh, and that can be done on press or off press. Um, but we again just want to make sure that you've got the right tools to do uh, to do the cleaning that that is needing needed. Um, the other thing that we like to Stress, and this works pretty well with us, um, especially with the audits, because once we do the audits, particularly if we can get the operator of that particular piece of equipment involved, then the operator has a little better understanding of how to take care of that analog roll, look at it prior to cleaning at times, and look at it after cleaning just to make sure that it's that it's uh, that it's done correctly. We suggest that uh, that a fairly high powered maybe maybe even like up to a 200 power scope be purchased you can get those from Pomarco you can get those from many many different locations but that is a uh, that's a good tool to have just to just to keep the knowledge base uh, up there the uh, cleaners as I as I mentioned we have several different uh, kinds that are available uh, the best thing to do if you're interested in in those is to uh, is to let us know. You can give us a call and we can give you the information and send you everything that you would need uh, as it relates to that. Um, the other thing that we that we stress, and this is perhaps well, it's important whether it's corrugated web or, or whatever the industry is, is to make sure that you've got a very good record of which role is. Where and you know that it happens sometimes that particularly if you're running a lot of different screens and volumes that if these roles get mixed up and they're not identified correctly or identified at all then uh, problems can result from that so that's one of the other things that we can uh, that we can help you with if uh, if that's necessary so this has been uh, this has been a short uh, a short webinar we hope one that has uh, conveyed some information to you folks. Does anybody have any uh, any questions before we bring this uh, this West Coast webinar to an end? All right. So l- let me uh, just have you do 
do this. If you do have a question, please don't hesitate to give me a call. My number is 714-393-8450, and it's Frank Green. And uh, James, what is, uh, what's your number? 908-244-0651. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks, for uh, being a part of this, and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you.